Hey guys, what's up? So today we're gonna deal with extremely important poverty indicators. Mind you, these are hundred percent gonna be asked either in the mains or in the essay. Even if they don't ask you, use them as much as you can. They are highly beneficial. They are basically human poverty index and multi-dimensional poverty index. So I'll tell you what are the differences and how they are calculated and what is their significance. This is me. This is the YouTube channel and Academy. So if you have any doubt or any query, you can ask on this Facebook page, facebook.com slash And please comment below the video on YouTube or on the Facebook page. Do spread the word of this education revolution. See, Human Poverty Index is an index. It was basically part of the Human Development Report, which was made between 1997 to 2010. Okay, so after 2010, there was major changes like IHDI was introduced, GII was introduced. Similarly, HPI was removed. Okay, it was completely discontinued and it was replaced by MPI. The term which can be used is supplanted rather than supplemented. Supplant means overthrowing. It basically includes the same thing as HDI. So there is no difference. Life expectancy is there. Knowledge is there and standard of living is there. While I was preparing for the civils, I used to read about it because there was no MPI in 2010-11. But then it came so I know this in quite detail so it might be asked sometimes just for your knowledge sake HPI 1 is calculated for developing countries see poverty is not there in developed countries that much okay so you cannot measure in the same index so HPI 2 was devised for OECD countries that is organization of economic cooperation and development which are supposedly the developed nations of the world which have high per capita income high life expectancy high rate of employment, etc, etc, high literacy rates. So this was the difference between HPI 1 and HPI 2. One is for developing countries and two is for OECD nations. Now HPI 1 for developing countries, it includes probability of not surviving till age of 40. In case of developing countries, it is 60. And then it includes adult illiteracy rate. In case of developed country, it is functional literacy skills. Okay. And finally, P3 includes population who lives without improved water source and children underweight for age this is mean okay so basically without any weight the average is taken of these two now how it is calculated using p1 p2 p3 so if let's say p1 is let's say 0 0.9 while p2 is 0 0.1 and p3 is 0 0.1 so will it reflect the correct way no it will be biased much much towards it it will be somewhere around 0 0.9 three seven something like that okay is that understood but to give proper weightage to all three of them you need to cube it and then take a cube root of all of it how it is done it is done using this formula so as you can see hdi one can be calculated like this uh, p1 to the power alpha where alpha is equals to three and p to the power three 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 and then the entire thing is taken okay it is the hpi for developing nations is that understood so that is how you penalize that which is uh, if you are lagging in some parameter you penalize it very heavily because you cube it and then it becomes much much more amplified now hpi for developed nations or oecd is calculated in the form of this p1 is till 60 as i told you p2 is having functional literacy skills not having functional literacy skills P3 is population below income poverty level or income poverty line and P4 is rate of long term employment or unemployment which is year or more. So if you just calculate a simple average then even if there is huge deviation it will be neutralized because mean is tend to neutralize but if you take a cube root of that deviation it will come very very big and then it will be severely penalized that is the point of HPI's alpha formula in which you make cube and then take the cube root now hpi for developed nations is calculated in the form of probability of not surviving till age of 60 because the standards are higher then adults who does not have functional literacy skills then population below income poverty line and finally long term unemployment rate what is long term more than 12 months or equal to 12 months basically more than a year so the calculation formula is exactly same alpha is again here 3 not 4 uh, so it is again to penalize if there is a huge deviation in one of the parameter okay so to penalize and exaggerate it 
and to give a better picture of poverty this formula is used and i have told you what are p1 p2 p3 p4 but hpa is completely discontinued and we now use a much much better sophisticated version called as mpi now what is mpi mpi is basically multi dimensional poverty index as the name suggests it supplements income based poverty measurement criteria what does it mean so let's say in india we have income level bpl and apl so if you earn let's say an arbitrary number if you earn more than 100 you are above poverty line if you earn less than 100 you are below poverty line it's an arbitrary number okay so to supplement that data because it's too simplistic right so to supplement that data you can use mpi okay now 2010 reports onwards that is hdr report human development report it was calculated mpi was calculated it came out in 2011 and it said more than half of india's population that is at that time 612 million was multi dimensionally poor the score was 0.283 and it was bad than bangladesh okay is that understood so even our poorer neighbor we were performing very very bad mpi basically complements monetary measures of poverty as i have already told you income level basically and it includes overlapping deprivation if you just want to remember one keyword please remember it includes overlapping deprivations it includes severe deprivations multiple de deprivations which are suffered by the people okay is that understood please please remember this term this is the only thing which is important now oxford poverty and hdi it is also called as ophi this is the body which calculates it along with united nations development program undp now it identifies deprivations in the same three dimensions as the hdi but the indicators are much much more now it basically shows the number of people who are multi dimensionally poor that is who are suffering deprivations in 33% of weighted indicators so for example if there are 10 indicators okay so let's say you are deprived in four does it mean that you are mpi since it says 33% people says yes it is mpi poor but no it is not necessary it is 33% weighted indicators okay even if you are poor in 5 out of 10 it does not mean that you are mpi poor this is a mistake which rookie which amateur aspirants do see it does not matter it's 5 or it's 3 even in 3 you can be mpi poor even in 5 you cannot be i'll tell you how it works now number of deprivations with which poor household typically lives is also shown with mpi data and it can be made according to the region or ethnicity caste class as well as by dimension wise any dimension can be taken so it's a great tool for policy makers who decides how the poverty should be tackled now mpi is basically your incidence of poverty multiplied by average intensity of the poverty is that understood in intensity into incidence incidence is percentage of mpi poor people while average intensity is denoted by a so h into a is equals to mpi just in case if someone asks now there are basically 10 indicators which you should remember in case of health we include child mortality and nutrition level in case of education we includes years of schooling and school attendance okay and living standards include cooking fuel toilet water electricity floor assets so now it is see mcq can be asked which of the following is not included and even in case of essay type answers if you write which of the following are there it gives a very very good impression that you have remembered your stuff so how to remember all of them either you can use one is sun two is shoe trick which i have told you earlier in memory techniques or we can use the visualization method it will just take you like one minute to remember it and you will never forget it so how to do it let me start with here so let's assume uh, this is an house okay this is a big house or a room a single room in a house okay is that understood now here is a table or a bed where baby is lying down okay and he is suffering from diarrhea okay just remember this just try to visualize this, this is an amazing technique he is suffering from diarrhea and here is the kitchen and the floor is made up of cow dung okay just remember this just try to follow me this is the gas stove and here is the gas where mother is here is a mother 
and she is cooking something okay is that understood so she is cooking something for her baby to eat okay just remember this some something is going on some fumes are coming out and here is a radio which is playing out some songs and here is a study room where a kid is reading some books okay so here is an open book and he is trying to read it because he has a test in school tomorrow okay and here is a father who is sitting and who is tired because he was working in the labor as a laborer in the fields okay because he could not go to school for much of the years and finally the mother comes here and she takes the baby to the toilet okay is that understood and outside the toilet is a light so because he has diarrhea so is their toilet is there and just as she goes to toilet so she ensures that there is running water coming out of the tap okay so now you know this picture it's very easy for you to now comprehend what i am trying to talk about now this picture will always stick in your head no matter how hard you try not to remember this first of all by diarrhea i wanted to say that this child is sick so he can be he can suffer from death also so that leads to child mortality that is number one indicator for that the mother is cooking something so she wants to take care of the nutrition of the family that's number two okay now the number three comes obviously what we are talking about till now education parameter right so children uh, the child is studying in uh, wants to go to school for the attendance so the third is school attendance okay so that's why he's studying too hard the father works as a laborer because he could not had expected years of schooling so years of schooling that is the fourth parameter or the fourth indicator so these two dimensions are covered health and education now come to this floor so the floor is made up of cow dung okay so this is the fifth parameter the floor there is a radio playing song so it means this is a sixth parameter that is the asset okay now mother is cooking fuel so there is a mother is cooking on gas so it is a cooking fuel so the seventh is cooking fuel okay please try to visualize it as much as you can it is an amazing technique okay so now as you can see there is a bulb outside so eighth is related to electricity okay ninth is related to the toilet itself because just try to visualize the entire picture and since there is running water so the tenth is related to water this is as simple as that and now you remember mpi in details try to make these diagrams this is called as visualization technique of memory and it works like a charm so i was telling you that even if a person is poor in five dimensions of standard of living he will have a weighted score of 27.7 percent which will not make him mpi poor it at least 33 percent weighted average is required so in education you give high all the three have one sixth one six uh, one third one third and one third weightage so the total weightage is one education has one third but since there are only two so each has one sixth okay health also has one sixth but in standard of living one eighteenth okay so just remember this because there are six of them that is why one eighteenth so do not go by number of dimensions go by weighted average weighted average is more important than number of dimensions when it comes to mpi now education as i have already told you years of schooling the criteria is at least 5 years of schooling is needed d means deprived so you are you will be termed deprived if no household hh means household this is a basic medical science community medicine lingo uh, the second is child school attendance so you are deprived if any child who is age appropriate that is going to school let's say age is between anywhere between 5 to 16 and he is not attending the school before finishing class 8th this is the second criteria now third is the health child mortality if there is any child mortality in the family it is deprived nutrition means if there is any adult or child malnourished now standard of living is obviously electricity means if you have no electricity then you are deprived sanitation means if it is either not improved according to the mdg standards millennium development goal or it is shared with other households then drinking water is if you do not have access to safe drinking water then you are deprived or if you have to walk for more than half an hour then also you are deprived floor means if you have household that is dirt sand or dung floor as i have already spoke is uh, like spoken since it was a cow dung floor so they were deprived in this cooking fuel means if the household cooks with dung wood or charcoal 
again you are deprived you should have a modern cooking fuel assets you don't need to remember any of this just for your sake radio tv telephone etc or car or truck or etc so these were the uh, 10 indicators so finally critical analysis of mpi there are lots of advantages it identifies the most vulnerable poorest of the poorest poorest among the entire lot it reveals spatial spatial means according to the space that is region temporal means time that is varies with time and space inter and intra nation that is within nation and between nation for example bangladesh versus india or for example up versus rajasthan and regional variation for example districts in up or marathwad region versus the western maharashtra region is that understood so it can give you a lot of data it from that data you can have effective allocation of resources and you can strategize you can plan and you can target the greatest intensity of poverty those people who suffer with greatest intensity of poverty can be targeted it addresses mdgs and sdgs it is millennium and sustainable development goals you can also monitor if there is any impact by policy to banadi you have made the policy but whether it is functioning or not that you can monitor through these mpis and it can be adapted for national poverty eradication programs and it can be used to study changes over time already spoken it has more indicators than human poverty index and hdi so it is much better and it is less susceptible to bias for example gdp per capita if you have high then your hdi tends also to be at higher level so there is a bias but in mpi it does not matter and it need much 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 more data so there is one problem also so it can be calculated for only around 100 nations what about other 100 nations so there are close to 200 countries on this earth so you should include all of them but mpi does not so i hope you like this tutorial do spread the word and be a part of this education revolution uh, these are the urls where you can ask the question do hit thumbs up it's really appreciated and thank you for watching the tutorial have an awesome day